Hello. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Do you enjoy the intro? Yeah. I just love what my son did with the intro. Yes. Uh, I hope y'all enjoyed the intro. If you didn't get to see it well, then you'll see it on next Sunday. You got to be on time. Got to show up on time in the cafe. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we are here and we yep. welcome you all. Yep. Waiting for a few people to right. come. Wait, on. okay, all right. Just a few we minutes. also podcasting yes. too as well. So we are uh, not, yeah. you know, giving shout outs at this particular time. So, you know, we don't shout out to you. It's not that we're being negative or mean or just ignoring you. We know you're here, but you know, we're like I said, we also use this uh broadcast for our podcast. So yes. Yes, but we are uh, so yeah. grateful to be here. And so thankful. So we're going to go ahead well, and, gonna go to the Lord and, and pray. start praying. Hallelujah. And wait for you guys to come on in. So yeah, let's go pray. right ahead. Well, let's touch and agree. Touch and agree. Hallelujah. Dear Lord, we're so thank thankful for another opportunity to go on live with your people. Thank yes. you for your word. Thank you for you, you being in our lives, Lord. Just thank you for your presence tonight. And Lord, we want to just have a good time in you. In Jesus' name we pray. And bless all our listeners again. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Amen. We want to welcome you to the Marriage Cafe where, where marriages, marriages come, come alive, alive through the oh. Word of God. I'm Prophet Loretta Pittman. And I'm Bishop William Pittman. And we are so grateful and so thankful that you are here. Your eyes need to come up to the light, uh, to the okay. camera. <laughs> I don't know what I'm you're up to doing. the camera. <laughs> you were looking down. I was looking down. I don't know how to figure it yeah, out. Yeah, too. yeah. I'm looking at the but, screen. Um, but anyway, we are here, and we're going to talk to you tonight Hallelujah. on the principles of marriage, Yes, which is awesome. God is amazing, and we want to talk to you about the principles of marriage, as well as we're going to talk to you about keeping your marriage vows. Yes. So we're going to get started and uh, let God, yeah. let go and let God. That's what we're going to do right now. Yes, so. yes, yes. I want to read this. Uh, I'm going to read the scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse uh, 4 through 5. And it says this in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5. Verse four, I'm starting at verse four. When thou vow, vow a vow unto God, defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Then he says in verse five, better is it that thou should have not vow than thou that should vow and not pay. You know, that's, this is how serious God feel about vows. Yes. And the reason I'm reading this tonight is because marriage, when you get into a marriage, you say your vows, yes. really, when you, you know, you marry somebody. Yes. So I just want to read this about the vows. And then we'll get into the, uh, what God has given us. The vow says this, you know, when you get ready to get married, you say, I'll take you to be my wife or husband. Mm -hmm. And it says to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poor, yes. in sickness and in health, mm -hmm. to love and to cherish, till death do us part, according to God's holy laws. And this is my solemn vow. Now that was, this is what uh, God given us when we say our vows. Yes. And a lot of people, I thought about that today, and a problem, the reason it touched my heart and my spirit is, when we say these vows, or I want to go, uh, right here. I want to show it like a vow, covenant, agreement, contract. The world would say a contract. Yes. But God say covenant. So when God made a covenant, you read the word of God and look all through the Bible. Every man and woman of God, he always definitely with man. He made a covenant with them. And the covenant is an agreement between God and man. And most of those covenants, God, God promised to protect you and if you keep his laws, he'll be faithful to you. Yes. Now that would touch me. So now I went back to the vows. When you say those vows and you're ready to marry somebody, a lot of people, they say those words, but do you take them serious? You know what I'm saying? When you vow, it is very important to God. It's important to the person that you marry. Because yes. they really, when both of y'all are taking that serious and you say, you know what? And health, sickness, and rich and poor and all these things. I'm supposed to love and cherish you and all that. When you think about those vows or that contract that you made, really you made that between the person, you, and God. That's you true. know what I'm saying? That's three of y'all. Y'all in covenant together. That's right. So, so when you made it, you know what I'm saying? Sometime, I wonder how many people that's been married or whatever for years, you, you know, people want to renew their vows. That's why. 
because they love that person and they committed to that person. There's nothing wrong with renewing those vows. Sometimes you got to remember what you said because sometimes when you're out there doing what you're doing, did you think about those vows you made to be committed to that person mm -hmm. through health, sickness, and, and all rich or poor? Did you think about it when you was ready to go out there and go cheat with somebody else? Did you think about it when that person got sick and you just ready to leave them? Did you think about when the money ran out, you ran out too? Mm -hmm. You That's know scary. what I'm saying? A lot of people, they they there in the good times when everything's going good or you first meet that person. She got that nice body or he's a hunk. You all in. Mm -hmm. But now when things start to fall apart, they're getting, you know, getting older mm -hmm. and things going this way and that way. And then you see something out there, a little younger or mm -hmm. the man is handsome and, you know, got muscles and all this. You ready to run. You ready to move on to the next person. Mm -hmm. But what I'm saying, when you got those vows, those vows should be right there before you and say, you know what? The grass may look greener on the other side, but I'm in this with a long run. Because you don't know what you're getting on the other side now. Yes. Come on, help me out, B. Yes, you don't know what you're getting Hallelujah. on the other side. And you got to make to sure that whatever it is that you're doing when it comes to being married or when, when it comes to saying those vows or when it even comes to getting to that point of saying vows, that mm -hmm. that is what you really want to do. So, Yes, <laughs> and, it, and, you know, and it's true. And the reason we talk to a lot of marriage couples and people that want to get married. And, and the reason I'm saying this tonight, because it's serious. A lot of people just want to jump in bed with a person, don't really know them. They're like, what do you know about them? You did. did you meet the family? Do you, do you know anybody in their family? Because a lot of times when you go around the family, it's funny. When you mm -hmm. go around the family, that uncle will tell you, remember that? Oh, yeah, that little knucklehead right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he a player. The uncles, some of the family members don't be online. Oh, yeah, that's and right. they'll tell you. I remember when I met my first girlfriend, her brothers was like, yeah, she um, she fast. You know, her brothers were saying, you sure mm -hmm. you want to get involved with him? Because they was cool with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yeah, I want to get involved. You Why? know what I'm saying? That's a possibility. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not going there tonight, uh -huh, y'all. But mm -hmm. you know, you were warned, and I he still warned. wanted to get involved with but it. We always, was fast. Yeah, yeah, we always tell it. You know, we tell everybody that uh, you know you get warnings, mm -hmm. either yes or no. God gonna warn us. Yes. You know what I'm, what I'm saying? People warn you mm -hmm. about you know. You go in the family and talk to them. Like I said, they they'll tell you they about. They you know what I'm saying? They'll warn because I talked about that this week yeah. about how. You will be warned before you get into a marriage or relationship with a man or a woman because mm -hmm. their name should hold a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. And um, just by their name, they should be known by the gates. That's what they said, by their name. So mm -hmm. that means in the gates, they are known. That means that somebody knows something about them. And nine times out of ten, when they come tell you about them, if it don't sound good to you, that's a warning. Yep. You know? Yeah. So yeah, we all you'll get, get warning. Them, yeah, you'll get them family members yeah. or whatever. Yeah. But so. you know, when you get that warning, it's still up to you because God can't mess with your free will. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. A lot of us, you know, we think we see the signs, oh, I love him, I mm -hmm. love her, and all this, and I'm going, Oh, he's he's just wonderful. Yeah. Like anybody can put on a show in the beginning. Yeah. But first, let me let me tell you, when a man, uh, I remember when a man don't have a you know, uh just in a relationship trying to get with this woman, mm -hmm. they're going to put their best foot forward. Yes. They're going to do everything they can everything to try to get can. between that person's legs. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They'll mm -hmm. tell you what you want to hear. Yes. They'll lie to you. They'll do whatever. Yes. They'll take you out to dinner. They'll treat you. They'll buy you clothes. They'll take you all over the world if they can to get you. And then the problem is you done gave your, your body to them. Now you expecting them to be faithful to you. Yes. When you have no covenant with them. Mm -hmm. You have you didn't make any vows with them. You don't have no contract with them. Mm -hmm. So really, what I'm trying to tell you tonight, if you don't, you go ahead and giving up your body to people, and you thinking they by their mouth they saying, oh, you know what? I'm gonna marry you, girl. <laughs> How many people have been there? Mm -hmm. How many people divorced? I mean, not divorced, broke up relationships because the person promised them in the beginning, I'm gonna marry you. But yeah. once he been with you, what? For a while, and he done got you in bed and got what he want, or she done got what she want. Now they take off. Mm -hmm. Why? They don't have to stay. They have no contract. They have no vow. They have no covenant with you. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Oh, hallelujah. So, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. God is talking to somebody out there. Yes, yes. If you think about it, how many relationships you've been in? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because you didn't get a covenant yes. or have them, you know, get married or, you know, you. You just can't give up your body 
to somebody saying, you know, girl, I'm in it with it for the long run. Anybody can lie. Anybody can lie. You want to touch on that? No, okay, well, <laughs> let me go on there. So now it was saying, yeah, you know, can lie. So we, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to read the vow because you already done went into it. No, 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 no. The reason I did the vow part because we already had, um, I said I was going to set the foundation yes. for it. And I really so wanted people go ahead to know it. in the covenant there. That's good. Yeah, we're just because, going into it. Yeah, you were saying the, the principles of marriage. Yes. But all, you know, we'll share that some other time. Yeah. But as far as the vows, and I wanted to, this covenant and the vows is because mm -hmm. it's important to God. Yes. When he said it's better for you not to even making a vow, if you don't, if you not, you know in your heart you're not going to keep it. Right. So exactly. what we say, and when you get in a relationship yes. and you make these vows, you know, you need to know that you need to keep this. Yes, you to do. death do you part. Death this is what the part. word, this is what the vows are telling you. Yeah, that's what Better for worse, sickness or poor. Yes, Lord. You know, mm -hmm. so we're supposed to be in there for what? The long run. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to just read in the book of Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I'm going to go ahead down to verse, um, let me make sure what this verse is. Verse 10, and it says, now to the married, I command ye not I, not I, but the Lord, a wife is not to depart from her husband, okay? But even if she does depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband, and a husband is not to divorce his wife. That's what the book of God, the word of God says in keep, keeping your marriage vows. That's what we are because Bishop started on the vows. So we're going to go ahead and, and deal with that tonight. So you want to touch on that? Yeah. Okay. Because, you know, what he's saying is that your vows are important to God mm -hmm. and it's important to you because marriage is serious. Mm -hmm. So when you take on these vows, like when we got married, you know, I was like, man, you know, I was ready for it because I'm, I always wanted a family. You see what I'm saying? I'm trying to help somebody tonight. Mm -hmm. I always wanted a family. And I said, I said, I told my wife, I was like, you know, it was just me and my sister. And I was like, I was like, no, I want more than like one child. Cause I know how my mom felt having just the two of us. And then my sister passed away young. So I was really, it was like me by myself. So I was like, no, I don't want my kids to be by themselves. So I want more than one. I already knew that, you know, and the way I was raised up already, always been responsible. I knew I could handle because I knew I got to take care of me, I got to take care of my wife, and I got to take care of my children. So uh, tonight, if I'm talking to somebody out there, you want a man that's going to, you know, already got the characteristics of a, a husband. Yes. You know what I'm saying? There you go. What you look, looking for. That's you ain't looking for part. somebody that's a player. Yes. You know, somebody that don't keep a job. Exactly. Somebody that that's, you know what, when you get into a marriage and you get in a re relationship, you building something together. Yes. You got a purpose in this thing. When y'all yes. get together, it's not just the sex. Mm -hmm. It's not just love. It's like, you know, hey, what are our plans? What yes. are your goals? What mm -hmm. you want out of life? This this is what you should be talking as a husband. Yes. You know, as, as a family man. You know, hey, baby. People, you getting in a relationship. What do this person want out of life? Yes. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what I want. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't know what I want to do with myself. Yes. You know what I'm saying? When you're young and you're not even like 17, 18 or 15 or whatever, y'all get together and y'all dating, you don't know what you really want. But then as you get on that path and you started hanging out together and maturing, you know what? I want to go to college. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to do this. I want to do that. Y'all coming in agreement because y'all building this thing together. So now you know how to help one another. Hey, my wife or my fiance or whatever, she want to go to college. Now I'm going to do what I can do for her to help her. Or she want to open her own business. I'm going to do what I can do for her to help her. And then the other thing go with you. Yeah, you know, babe, I want to get this new truck or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she's trying to help you. This is what it's all about. Marriage is all about building. Yes. And staying building in a covenant together. relationship and keeping God at the forefront of yes. what you what you believe in. God, you know what? I can't handle this. There's nothing wrong with going in your closet and say, Lord, I need your help right now. Yes. I don't have the money or I don't know how to figure this situation out. That's what God is here for. Yes. God is there. He knows he can he can make a way out of no way. What the old folks would say, he'll make a way out of no way for you. Yes. When you don't understand like what's going on, well. you won't get ready. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm just taking off. Go ahead, man. Oh, I see you ready to go. Gracious, gracious. No, I just wanted to touch no, on no, that no, as well. Good. And just say, no. you know, marriage is important. 
And yes. you have to make sure that the person that you do marry, you're going to stay married to. Yes. Because the word of God clearly Hallelujah. states it right here that if you get married, mm -hmm. you should not be getting a divorce. Right. You should not. But we're going to go into more of the reason, you know, go into more of that in a few more minutes about how that actually works, how that dynamic works. You know, God doesn't want you to be divorced. So when you do, when you're out there and you are married and you do get a divorce, mm -hmm. somewhere down the line, there was a breakdown in your marriage or sometimes somewhere down the line, somebody did not, you know, uh, decide they wanted to stay in the marriage or remain. They wanted to go off and they wanted to do some other things, you know. And in that case, you know, you can't really, you know, help that, I guess, if that person just changed their mind about being yes. married and wanted to go off. And do something else, but we're gonna we're gonna talk about that more here as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, marriage is um the covenant of marriage is extremely important, and that's something you should not enter into if you know you're not ready. If you know you're not ready to do it, don't do it because I don't understand people who do it and they want to do all these other things within the marriage. You know, if they you don't want to be married, you want to be single, you want to be out there messing around and doing what you do, don't get married. That's that's the key to that. Don't get married because that's the Bible clearly states that you are not to divorce. Yes. You know, so you know what? Why are you saying that? too? That, no, no, that's so good. What you just said. Mm -hmm. If you know you're not work ready for marriage, don't let somebody rush you, push yes, you into doing right. it. Something that you know you're not ready for. That's it's right. nothing wrong with this is the communication. And, and you want to make sure you're with the right person. Yes. It's nothing wrong with being honest and say, you know what? I just came out of a bad relationship. I'm trying to get myself together. Exactly. Nothing wrong with that. Yes, please. So I didn't want to go to 12. Um, that was uh, 10, 10 to 11. And I'm going to go to 12. But it says, to the rest, I, okay, him, mm -hmm. but not the Lord, say, if any brother has a wife who does not believe and she is willing to live with him, let him not divorce her. Okay, and do we know what that part means? You want to you want to explain yeah. that? Okay, you know it's like the Bible says this. God saying this. You know you can win a person over if you saved and that person is not saved, mm -hmm. not a believer. You can mm -hmm. win that person over. You can cover that husband and that wife, yeah, even if it's an uh, unbeliever. But God know you you the child of God. You know what I'm saying? Through you, your your spouse is covered. Yes, and then it says, and a woman. Who has a husband who mm -hmm. does not divorce, who does not believe, if he is willing to live with her, let her not divorce him. For the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife um, is sanctified by the husband. Otherwise, your children would be unclean. But now they are holy. That uh, is really positive right, right there. That's powerful action uh -huh. right here. Because basically, if you know you have a husband or a wife mm -hmm. and you they marry you as a believer, and they're not a total believer, but they're maybe somewhat of a believer, or maybe mm -hmm. not a believer at all. And they marry you and they're comfortable with you believing. They the word of God is saying that they are sanctified. In other words, sanctified, let me tell you what that means. Sanctified means set apart to declare holy. So that means your spouse is holy and your children will be holy because you are holy. Ain't that something? Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That's so good right there. But it seemed like it's something. If you're yeah. holy, mm -hmm. I don't care. This is what I tell people all the time. You could be on a plane, honey, and all them people on that plane don't believe, but that one believer believe, and God will save that plane because that one person is a believer. Mm -hmm. Goes to show you that by just you believing in your household, you can sanctify your family, your husband and your children are saved because you as a wife are holy and you believe you are a believer. Okay? You believe God. So then God says your your husband is going to be holy and your children are going to be holy even though they don't believe or your husband, let's say, don't believe. Your children are covered. Okay? So that means even the husband, if the husband is a believer and the wife is not and you all have children, your children are saved and sanctified or let's say sanctified, holy, and your wife will be holy because you, man of God, are a believer. That is just powerful right there for me. Powerful yeah. because that means that, yeah, you're in a marriage with someone who don't believe, but they can be won over by your belief. 
you know and what happens sometimes though in certain marriages is that people are not won over because some people make uh religion or let's say some people make believing spooky okay spooky in the sense of they're constantly at your day at your seven days a week you're not even paying no mind to your husband or you are a husband that's in church for seven days a week and you ain't paying no man mind to your wife or your kids you know just it's all about church 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 it's not always about that your relationship should be based on god and based on jesus you should be having a relationship with them meaning that you don't always have to be at the church house in order to have a relationship with god you just don't you know that doesn't make you holy to be at the church 24 7. it doesn't it makes you have a problem in your marriage if your spouse got a problem with you always at church that's not the way to win your spouse over. The way to win your spouse over is to conform sometimes to what they want. Sometimes. Let's say that when I saw there's a Sunday or whatever, he don't really want to go to church or she don't really want to go to church. Okay, well, then why don't you suggest that y'all go ahead and pray? Have a just just go ahead and pray for that day or that morning if you don't if you're not normally praying together, and then go out and have a good day together with each other. You know what I'm saying? And especially if that spouse is not pressing you um, all the time about church and you're not always constantly at church. you got to have a balance in your marriage. You cannot go to church all the time when you have a spouse that's not a believer. Now, this is the this is the part why, you know, the Bible clearly tells you to go with someone that's equally yoked. That means on your team that love God, that love church just as much as you, that love to serve just as much as you and all those kind of things. Then you won't have those problems. But if you're marrying a spouse that is not, you know, a man or a woman of God and you want to be with them and they still want to be with you, even though you are, the Bible clearly is letting you know that they are sanctified by you. Yes. That's you want to good. touch on that? That's good. I was about to hit that last part you just talked about. Because right. a lot of people we talk about unequally yoked with yes. unbelievers. But you show right there in the scripture that God still covers you by the believer. Yes. You know, and I thought about something just now. I noticed, like, I met a few couples you know, going out evangelizing mm -hmm. that I, I used to say, how can a Christian marry a Muslim? Yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But we see the scripture right now. God, as long as they willing to be together, yes. God still cover them, blesses them by the one. Yes. You by know, the one. by the one. And that's God's amazing. Still, you right know, there, God is still covered. Yes. You still covered by the blood of Jesus. Even yes. if your spouse is not a believer, but you are. Yes. You know, so you make your home holy. So a lot of us, you that know, is, a lot of us get caught up in the religious part. Oh, yes. he's a Muslim, she a Christian. Yes. Or he's a Christian and she's a Muslim. Right. They get caught up into that. And God said, you know what? I'm a cover as long as she is right standing yes. with me. Yes. And obey my vows. And, yes. and I'm gonna I'm gonna bless him and the children. And the children. <laughs> Look at God. Yes, so sometimes we put that on people and say, yes. you know what? That's not right. They not this or they not that. Yeah. We some sometimes we just gotta watch what we say and what we do. Yes. As men and women of God. Yes. Because sometimes we can read the Bible and we'll we'll twist some things. Mm -hmm. And you go back in there and the Holy Spirit show you that word and say, you know what? Is the word say if you're willing to be in this relationship together, yeah, God will bless it. As mm -hmm. long as the one believer, mm -hmm. God will bless that this marriage, as long as y'all willing to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tell you this too if you're willing to stay in a relationship and work through it, God is with you as long as you keep God on the forefront, mm -hmm. but you can't go ahead of God. Mm -hmm. This is what he's saying. Listen, I, I just want to give you this part here. A lot of people want to say, you know, they want to go get in a relationship. And, and should we sleep together yes. with no vows? Mm -hmm. So now it's like a contract. If you have no contract, you can't expect anything. Yes. You know, when you got an agreement with a person, you see in that contract, hey, I'm going to do this. I'm going to pay you this time a month. And this is what this person needs to expect. Send it through the mail or whatever. That's the contract. That's the agreement y'all got. Mm -hmm. But when you just give yourself to a person, you know, give yourself up with no contract, no vows, no agreement. Yes. He says this, God don't have to protect you. God don't have to, to honor you. He says when you break covenant, bad things will happen. Mm. You know, when you break covenant with God, if you read through the Ooh, scripture geez. and everything, like when Moses, when Moses was going to the promised land, mm -hmm. Moses read the commandments to the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. The Israelites and telling them, hey, you know, if you do this, God promised us he will take care of us. Yes. And then he says there among all people and amongst the kingdom of priests, God calling us a holy nation. But he tells us in the promise that if you keep my commandments, 
then these blessings are going to come on you. Yeah. It says the covenant uh, with Israel, because the Lord people broke the covenant, they made them uh, the God of uh, the ancestors broke the covenant with God. Mm -hmm. God had no reason to protect them. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why they were scattered. That's why, you know, the promises didn't really come to them because they, they didn't obey the commandments. Yes. I don't know who I'm talking to. Yes. I'm, I'm trying to get it out there tonight. Yeah. When you had a covenant in your marriage, you say those vows and yes. you break that covenant. Here mm -hmm. we go, y'all. Yeah. When you break that agreement, what yes. you think? Bad things are going to happen. Yes. We see it. We see it all the time. And this is the one that I'm trying to give you. Before you make those vows, before you do this thing, if you know you're not going to, you know. I not yeah, exactly. Yeah, you're, you're not, not going to honor for the it. Long run. That's right. Don't do Don't it. Don't do it. He said it's better for you not to do it. Yes. Don't make those vows yes. if you know you you know you're not going to keep them anyway. Yes, exactly. Says, and then he says bad things are going to happen to you because God, yes. you have no protection. Yes. over you now. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah you have God. no protection. And then I've seen it. I've mm -hmm. seen it so much with bad things happening to people who decide they want to go ahead and go ahead and get married anyway, just bypass the warnings and bypass how they feel and bypass what they were thinking. And they went ahead and got and proceeded with the marriage and the marriage didn't work out. The marriage didn't work out. Something happened within it. And then they got divorced and then all kinds of stuff started happening after that, you know? And so you don't want to be doing that. You know, you got so many people out there who have been married like five and six times, mm -hmm. seven times, you know, Yes. You know what I mean? And if you're getting married that many times, that means you're not marriage material. You're not yes. ready to be married. You cannot be married. It's not for you to be married. It's not in the cards for you. Yes. Okay. It's not in, it's not God's destiny for you to be married if you're married five, six, and seven times. You know, and all that stuff. That's ridiculousness. You know, so you know, you need to you know, pull back, pray. Find out what it is or read, you know, what God is saying, which we're talking about it now right here in First Corinthians chapter seven about what God is saying about being married. Because evidently you did not sit down, read, the, read the covenant contract and you did not sit down and read what God had to say about it. You know, that means your marriage wasn't even based on God. Your marriage was based on something else, you know, some mm -hmm. other situation. But, you know, right on that part. Money or saying, whatever it is, yeah. but it wasn't based on God. Yeah. Go ahead. And it's like like you said. When you, you you say those vows and you're in a committed relationship, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? You you in it to whatever needs to be done. You're yes. supposed to be there. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So if you just in a relationship and uh, some people are selfish, mm -hmm. put it that way. Like you said, if the money's gone, they gone. If yes. The people are. Um, if they ain't getting what they want, exactly. they gone. If they're they not getting the sex they want, they gone. Mm -hmm. if they, it's always something about what they're getting from it. It's yes. not about the other person because, see, marriage is a give thing. Yes. That's what you don't get about being married. That's mm -hmm. what a lot of people don't get. You're giving your all, yourself, mm -hmm. your everything, your, your total being. Because mm -hmm. now this person that you're coming into covenant with is going to know everything about you every day, all day, for however long. And so once you once you're doing that, you're opening up yourself and you're saying to yourself, I love this person so much that I want to spend the rest of my life with them, meaning that they're going to be with you until death do your part. And then not only just that, they're going to know everything about you. That means you're good and you're bad. They're going to know it all. And so you're opening up yourself to that. And then you're giving yourself to that person. Mm -hmm. It's not about taking from that person. It's not about, oh, you know, if I'm not getting no money, I'm, I'm not going to be in this relationship no more. If it's not, if I'm not going to get sex the way I want it, you know, however many times a day, then I'm leaving. If I'm not getting, you know, whatever it is that you are looking to get. When you are a person like that stepping into a marriage, you are a greedy person. And you're not marriage material. You're not ready. Because it's not based on the contract of God. It's not based on the covenant of the word of God. It's based on what you can get from your the person that you're about to be married to. You know, mm -hmm. it's about what you can get or how you could come up or how that person can help your social status or how that person can help you to go to the next level. You know, if you're doing all that, no. No, you need not to get married because that's not going to be a marriage that's going to last. Yeah. And then, you know what, too? I'm, I'm hearing something that's just running through my mind right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Listen, a lot of people out there, when you, like you said, you get married and all this, you got to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. A lot of people get in the marriage and then all of a sudden they talk about, oh, we want an open relationship. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to have an open relationship. Mm -hmm. So an open relationship that mean, but that that mean you got to come in agreement with one with each other. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because you already made these 
marriage vow to be committed to one another. Yes. Now you're talking about bringing somebody else into your relationship. Which the Bible does not talk about. The Bible don't mm. say what well, the Bible talks about it, but the Bible says you're going to be a man of one wife. You're not supposed to have two wives or a wife having two husbands. Yes. That's not what that's supposed to that you're not mm. that's some freakish stuff. That's some stuff that's off the chart mm. that God ain't even put together right there. That's not what he's talking about. Mm. So Number one, if you're practicing that, you're out of the will of God. Uh-oh. Walking heavy Bottom line, right there. you're out of his will if you're practicing, uh, you know, open marriages. Mm -hmm. You know, you got people out here who think that that's the, the thing to do. And that is what God wants us to be doing. But that is not what God wants us to be doing. But you know what? When you're in a committed relationship and you say those vows and you know what? How can another man, when you're really in a committed relationship, you don't want nobody else to have your wife mm -hmm. or your husband. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. But some people, you know, they, you know, I'm not the husband or whoever make them feel like I'm not uh, satisfying them in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. So let's try something else. Mm -hmm. You know, people are not satisfied. You can't please everybody anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes single people or anybody, they just can't be pleased. Some people can't be pleased. But you can't let a person tell you how to live your life. If you're a godly person and you know you you said those vows and you standing by those vows, you don't, you in this covenant, you in this agreement, you don't have to go the other way. That's right. You do not have to make a decision to say, you know what, I'm going to approve this open relationship. Mm -hmm. No, no. You said a vow for that person to be, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, to be committed to you and you only. Yes. So you have a right to say, you know what, if you want to do that, mm -hmm. you stepping out of your marriage. Yes. You know, your but I'm not in agreement with it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. I'm no. not in agreement no, with it. No, that's and not. you have a right to it because you already made you had a contract. You have the covenant. Yes. You know, you said these vows. Yes, you did. Me and you, baby, all the way. Whatever happened, we in it together. That's right. You know what I'm saying? And when you get out there and you start doing the things you're doing, yeah, you can be pulled away. Yeah. You know, out of your marriage. Like I said, the grass look green on the other side, mm -hmm. of course. But you don't understand when you put 20, 30, 40 years into a relationship, you know what I'm saying? You're supposed to be committed. You're supposed yes. to know where you're going. Yes. Not talking about 30, 40 years and you talking about getting a divorce. The yes. kids are grown. Mm -hmm. Now y'all don't know what to do with yourself. Yes. Come exactly. on, that's foolish. Yeah, that is sad. I think that's You're the supposed to enjoy thing. one another. That's a crazy thing. Why would you wait till you your marriage get that old mm -hmm. and you you both are that old to decide that you want to I'm sorry, oh, that you pleasure. want to be outside of your marriage. Yes. Excuse me, I just got a little sniffles there. But anyway, mm -hmm. you want to go outside your marriage or you mm -hmm. want to divorce or you want to get away from your wife. You've been married 50 years. Are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. We've been married 50 years and now you make a decision that you want to move on with somebody else. That makes no sense. That makes you a fool. Yep. I'm Amen. sorry, but it does. So, you know, I really should be enjoying the fruits of your labor. Yes. The fruits of being married that many years. The joy that you should have from being married that many mm -hmm. years and the blessings of it all. You know what I'm saying? God gave mm -hmm. you that many years with that person. There had to be something about that person you you know, you loved and wanted to be with, and you know, in order for you to have been married that long, that just doesn't make sense to me. Mm -hmm. It just Hallelujah. doesn't. Hallelujah. Nah, it just, just doesn't. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. I want to go ahead. Yeah. Um, oh, are you done? No, with I'm that? Done okay, because I wanted to talk on yeah. the divorce part. We said we was mm -hmm. going to get to that. Okay, so we're getting to that right now. Now it says here on verse fifteen. But if the unbeliever departs, the unbeliever, now I want you to hear this part. If the unbeliever departs, let him depart a brother or a sister um, or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. Uh oh. But God has called us to peace. For how do you know, O oh wife, whether you will save your husband or how do you know, O oh husband, whether you will save your wife? So it's letting you know that if you decide to marry an unbeliever and they decide they wanted to be with you in this marriage, then OK, you're good. That person is sanctified by you. But if that the unbeliever decide they wanted to divorce you and leave, then let them go ahead and leave. And now that's a brother to you. That's a brother to you or a sister to you. Because that was an unbeliever. That person did not believe. So right. when you are in a marriage with someone who don't believe in God and they decide to leave you and get a divorce from you, you are free. 
you are free to marry a man or a woman of God now because you already have been with a person who didn't believe and you are free to do so. That's what the word of God is basically saying right here. Mm -hmm. Let them depart as a brother or a sister. Yes. Okay. Uh, so that means you're not tied to them. You're not mm -hmm. stuck with having to continue to uh, uh, be with a person who don't believe, you know, and the reason why I'm talking about this, because I see so many cases of this um, where a wife, mainly women, they'll say, oh, my husband left me and I, you know, he's with another woman and, you know, I'm about to have a baby or I'm about, this is about to happen for us and this and that, but he left me for her. Well, was he a believer? Because if he was a believer and you're a believer, there's no way that he would have just picked up and left. I'm sorry, but when a man truly believes God and is a believer of God, he's going to be a follower of God. He's yes. going to be a follower of the word of God. I don't care what nobody says on that. And when you are truly, when God is truly in your heart and in your soul, mind, and your spirit, you're going to follow the principles and the will and the way of God if you truly love him. Yes. Okay, you are not going to sit up there and go against what the word of God says, which is leave your spouse, which is go off to be with somebody else. You got a family over here, you got yes. a family over there, you got families everywhere. Mm -hmm. No, that's a man of the world. Yeah. Bottom line, and then, and if that woman do it, that's a woman of the world. So God is letting you know you married that person, yes. you decided to marry an unbeliever, and so if they pick up and they leave you, you don't have to keep crying over them, you don't have to keep pining over them. You don't have to keep worrying about when they coming back because they ain't coming back because they're not a believer and they don't want to be with you no more. Are you OK to let them go ahead and move on, leave, go ahead and leave. And it's OK for you to move on and allow God to bring in that man of God or that woman of God that you're supposed to have probably had in your life from the beginning. And especially if you say you are a woman or a man of God. You know, a lot of times we pick and choose these people and go out there and just get married to them. And then we want to put God on it and say, oh, I don't want to leave my husband or my wife because God going to get me for that. No, he's not. God is not sitting up there waiting to get you the minute you decide you want to leave your marriage because you decided to marry an unbeliever. No, he's not. He's letting you know you should have never gotten into that relationship in the first place. He didn't give it to you because God is not going to give you an unbeliever. I've never seen God. Give a man or a woman an unbelieving spouse and put them in there. Now, one time I did. Actually, you know what? When you go back to the book of Hosea, one of those books mm -hmm. where the wife was a prostitute uh, yeah. and God had him marry a prostitute. And then that woman, you know, but that was to teach him something. Right. That was to teach him something. Okay. Now, if you get into a relationship with a friend like that, it's teaching you. And you should be learning from it. And what you need to learn is that you don't want to deal with a man or a woman that, that is not a believer. Because that, that is not what God would want you to have. You know, unless God speak to you specifically and tell you, yeah, I want you to go marry this person here who is out there doing what they're doing. But they're going to come in and they're going to be changed because God's going to change them through you. You know, that's the only um, other reason why why God would allow you to have a relationship like that because he wants that person to be changed by you. But like I said, when you are in a marriage with a person yes. that's not a believer and they want to live with you, you can't be at church all the time. I'm sorry, you just can't if they don't want you there. And that's why you want to be equally yoked when you get married, right? Definitely. You want to be equally yoked. Like me and my husband, we're equally yoked. We both love God. We both want to serve God. We both want to talk about God. We both want to you know, spread the word of God. We both want to serve God. You know, that's what I'm saying. So when you have a, a, a husband that don't want to do it or a wife that don't want to do it, you can't be at church all the time. You have to give that husband or that wife their just due. Yes. You render yourself to them, you know? And so, you know, if you want to have that husband or that wife to come in and to love God and to do the things that you do as far as God's concerned, you need to be praying for them. You need to be seeking God's face. You need to Pray with them, teach them how to pray, you know, and those kind of things, especially if you are the spouse who believes that you have a little bit more, um, you know, you have a lot more um, knowledge when it comes to that. You want the spouse to be a, a believer. And so when you want that spouse to be a believer, that's what you do. You go ahead and you begin to uh, 
pray with them and maybe read the word of God to them. Maybe you need to study. Maybe y'all study a little bit together just yes. so that they all have a little bit of knowledge of why you really like to look, why you love God. Why do yes. you serve God? Because a lot of them don't understand. And so it is for you to help them to understand, but not for you to be at church 24 seven and then get mad at them because they don't want to go to church. When you knew when you married them, they wasn't going to go to church. You knew that. You knew they wasn't going to love God when you married them. You knew they wasn't going to serve God when you married them. So why is you getting mad at them now because you don't marry them or her and now they don't want to serve God with you? That's just the way that goes. Hello, they are out. They are worldly people. That's what you married. So now what you got to do is you got to work with what you have. Work within what you have. Work within your marriage and then help them to, yes. to learn and understand. You want to touch on that? Uh, yeah, I got this right here. <laughs> this is you want. Yeah. Okay. I want to I want to touch on this right here. Mm -hmm. It says this. When you have a covenant or a contract or a vow or agreement, when it's broken, mm -hmm. when it's broken, yes. a lot of people don't understand. When people go outside their marriage or relationship or, you know, you, you see things changing in the marriage, in the relationship. You got to, you, you can make a, a change. Yes. When, the, when the covenant is broken, this is what I'm trying to say. You say your spouse, I, I hear it here. When uh, you say your spouse want to go out, he's cheating right now. She's cheating on you, mm -hmm. right? So when they broke the covenant, they broke the agreement. So now you can make a, a new agreement. Mm -hmm. See, you have a right to change things up. I don't know what I'm talking to out there. But when a person is cheating on you or doing something, they stepped out of their, whatever they're doing, they stepped out of their commitment. They they broke their vows with you. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't get it. When a person break their vows with you, you got a right to change the agreement. This mm -hmm. is what I'm telling you tonight. You can put a new demand on this. Mm -hmm. You broke the agreement. Yes. Don't think I'm just going to say, oh, it was all right. You cheated on me one mm -hmm. time. I'm just going to let it go. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you stepped out of your committed relationship, mm -hmm. you didn't come in agreement. It wasn't like she agreed or he agreed to it. Go ahead and do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. No, you broke that agreement. You broke that contract. You broke your vows. So now it's up to that person. Now, you got to realize, don't let them be like, uh, you know, I know I was wrong, you know, you know, I still love you and all this kind of stuff. No, you can say, you know what? You stepped out on me. Yeah. So now I got a list of demands. If we're going to stay in this marriage and be committed, you got to have to do what I need you to do. Now, whatever this wife or husband say, this is what you agreed to. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to let you back in, but you can't do this anymore. This is the last straw. You got to put your foot down. And put a list of demands together. Mm -hmm. Now, because, you know, the person feels as though, I tell everybody this. When you break trust, it's hard to get it back. Mm -hmm. Who am I talking to tonight out there? Mm -hmm. You're in a committed relationship. You got to understand. Y'all love each other. And you can go where you want to go, do what you want to do. Now, you stepped out on your in your marriage. Yes. Since you stepped out in your marriage, now, why should I trust you? Mm -hmm. I don't know when you're going over that person's house. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you meet them at work, after work, or whatever you're going to do. Mm -hmm. But now you expect me to trust you again. Mm -hmm. No, you broke the covenant. You broke the agreement. So now if I need to stick a location on your phone, track you, that's that's <laughs> this is mine. If you want to stay in this relationship, mm -hmm. I can't trust you anymore. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you broke the covenant. Yes. And this is what a lot of people, they stay in this relationship. Well, I don't, or some of them say, you know what? I don't care what he do out there. Mm -hmm. No, I care what my wife do out there. Yes. And it's if you're a respectable man and woman of God, yes. you should have made up, make, you know, check this person out and make sure this person love God. Because yes. most of the time what my wife said, if you really a man and a woman of God and you love God, you're not going to do these things. Nope, you're not. The Holy Sorry. Spirit going to tell you, the they're going to convict, convict you. you right away. Say, you, you need to run. They're going to say, you're wrong you know, for that. Exactly. You're wrong for what you're doing. This is not so, right what you're doing. Yeah. He's going to let you know. He is. So mm -hmm. there's no excuse for that. There's no yeah. excuse. You're making an excuse for that. But I wanted to say, what came to me, the Holy Spirit Hallelujah. wanted me to tell you that yes. God can restore a marriage of two believing people quicker then he can restore a marriage with one believer and one unbeliever. Yes. It takes time because mm -hmm. that one, that person that's an unbeliever has number one, become a believer and then have to want to change, mm -hmm. you know, has to want to allow God to change their heart because God would need to change their heart. But God don't mess with our free will. Yes. So he's not going to make that unbeliever become mm -hmm. a believer. And that unbeliever is going to want to, going to need to be mm -hmm. one himself. He's yes. going to want to, he's going to have to want to be a believer. 
to, to come back into the marriage with you and to have the marriage restored. And the reason why I'm saying it is because number one, Holy Spirit gave it to me, but number two, you got a lot of people sitting out there waiting on husbands to come back and wives to come back that ain't never coming back. They're not coming back because they are unbelievers in the first place. So you're sitting there waiting for years, getting older, you know, not having a good life, not having fun in your life, not having companionship, not having sex, not having any of it because you're sitting there waiting for a husband or a wife that that decided they wanted to go back out there to the world where they was in the beginning, where you found them. Yes. They don't want to be married to you. They don't want to be in a covenant relationship. They don't want to go by the word of God. They don't want it. And so instead of you sitting there, continuing to wait and waiting for God to restore something that God probably never put together in the beginning, you know, because you went and found an unbeliever and they didn't want to dwell with you, then you are just wasting time. That's what I'm just letting you know now. You're wasting time. And I'm a prophetess, a pastor, and this is my husband. He's a bishop. And we're reading what the word of God says right here. You know, God doesn't want you sitting around waiting for somebody who ain't never going to probably come back. He mm -hmm. wants you to come to him and let him know he already knows what's going on. But repent for your maybe sins in the marriage and the relationship and how things went. And if it went left and it didn't work out and you got a divorce, God is not looking for you to sit there and not be in a committed relationship if that's what you truly want. God wants to give you a committed relationship. Number one, commit yourself to God after a divorce. Number one, that's the number one thing you do. And then you let God decide whether he wants to restore that relationship or whether he wants to give you a new covenant relationship, but a covenant relationship that he probably already predestinated for you. Because a lot of times we're not receiving our predestination because we're so busy rushing to trying to go get it. Because we hear a prophecy saying, oh, you're getting married this year in November, you know, uh, 2020, not November 18, 2020. And then you run out there and go find somebody instead of letting God. If God says November 18, 2020, then you need to wait until that spouse come walking in. You need to wait until that man or that woman of God come walking in saying, you know, you my wife or you my husband. And we get married, you know, November 18, 2020, you know. You need to wait you know, for that. So that, I'm just, you know. That's good what you just said, too. Because it's, it's sad how people are waiting and sitting mm -hmm. around. Right. And I agree. Like, you, know? you, you you hear about some people, they still marry, but they've been separated for 10, 20 years. Yes. You know. That's not he's coming, out he's there. Not she's back. out there still. They're like having said, fun. Having they're fun. They're sleeping around. They're sleeping with everybody they can get their hands on. And you, still and you sit up there praying and pining and crying. And God is saying, hey, come on, girl. Or come on, man. Get this all the way together. Mm -hmm. You knew that person was not saved when you married them. You knew they didn't love me. You knew they wasn't trying to find me. But you're still sitting up there pining and crying and, and, and all of those kind of things over somebody who's out there having a wonderful time mm -hmm. while you're doing that. Mm -hmm. It is what it is, you know? And I'm going to say it again. A lot of times when a person starting to, uh, what would you say, mm -hmm. want to skip out on their marriage or whatever, mm -hmm. want to get in a new relationship, you get warning signs. Yes. You know what I'm saying? When Everybody a person want to cheat, you know something ain't right you in your relationship. Yes. A woman, you know what I mean? Come on. You, you warn whether naive. it's a good marriage. You're yes. warned whether it's good to be married to this person mm -hmm. or you're warned whether it's bad to be married to that person. You're warned either way. God will either confirm that you're supposed to get married or he will unconfirm that you're supposed to be getting married. You ever see these situations where, you know, a person is supposed to be married on a certain day and all of a sudden a windstorm comes and just blows everything away? Right. That's a sign. Uh, that is God letting you know this is not going to work. Don't you just see the way this blew away here? Yeah. That's exactly what's getting ready to happen to your marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly what's getting ready to happen. God will give you yes. a sign. Now, the day me and my husband, we got married, nothing but good. God mm -hmm. even showed me, like I said, uh, God had already mm -hmm. told me this was my husband. Mm -hmm. But we had a beautiful sunny day. We got to the altar and everything on time, our rings and everything. I mean, the way we were dressed, I mean, everything just worked out. That's when, you know, God's hand is on it, when yes. everything works the way it's supposed to work. Remember, mm -hmm. all things work together for the good of those who love, yes, the, Lord. love the Lord. Okay? Mm -hmm. But if you're marrying somebody who don't love God, God sees some stuff down the line, and he will let all kind of stuff happen on the day you both be getting married or, or a few days or a week or whatever, you'll know because of how things begin to go. You're arguing a lot. 
you're disagreeing all the time. He's saying some things, you're saying some things. Then you get to the day, you don't, you do still feel doubt in your mind on whether you should actually walk down this aisle with this person, but you still go do it. Yep. That all kind of hell is happening behind the scenes, or there's all kind of different things that happen. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes you will meet some opposition a little bit sometimes when it's supposed to come together. Yes. But if you got disaster mm. after disaster after disaster, no. Mm. That's a sign. I'm sorry. And then That's the deal, what you always say is good. Like you got to do your homework on people. Yes. You know, you're talking about spending the rest of your life with this person, you know, mm-hmm. to death do your part. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So, but I, I'm, I'm picking up something I wanted to touch on. That's so good. Some people are asleep in a relationship. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't want to, you know, they don't want to heave the warning signs. Mm-hmm. You've been getting the warning signs. You're not happy in this marriage anymore. And things are changing, mm-hmm. you know, and you just sleep. Then all of a sudden you really is it's going, you're not getting your way, he's not coming home, he's not doing this. You you see, you notice these things yes. later on. Or she been asleep all this time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he or she, but you've been sleeping. Now all of a sudden you want to wake up yeah. and say, you know what? Um he, he he's not coming home anymore, or or he's staying out and or you know, I don't know what to do. Should I pray about it? Should I leave him or whatever? It may be too late. Yes. But you know, this is what you should do. You got a right. You mm-hmm. got you made vows. You got a contract. You hey, text him whatever. We need to talk tonight. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, not demand. put it off. Some demand. Yeah, you got a. You, you have got a right. right to make a demand. You know, because or a this, command on your husband or your wife. Right. And you supposed to be happy. Yes. Nobody's telling you to stay in a committed relationship when it's going bad yes. or wrong. No. You got a free will. You can say, you know what. I don't have to take this. Yes. I didn't sign up for this. Mm-hmm. This is not in my agreement. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's not in your agreement to be beat. Yes. It's not in your agreement to be talked down to. Yes. It's not in your agreement to take verbal abuse. Mm-hmm. It is not in your agreement. Yes. God said that that man able to love that wife and that husband to respect cherish. her husband. Yes. So if you're respecting your husband and that mm-hmm. respect level, like I said, you got to keep that respect level high when you're married. Then believe me, you shouldn't have no problem with your husband loving you. Mm-hmm. Okay? You should not. And if you are, then there's a problem. And you need to discuss that. You need to put a demand and a command yeah. on, on your marriage, on your husband, you need or your wife. You need to say, no, we're going to talk about this. And don't mm-hmm. put it off. You know, ask God to give you the proper time, the proper tone. I talk to y'all about this all the time, about tone and timing. And then say, God, we, mm-hmm. we're you no know, husband yes. or wife. We're going to have this conversation. Mm-hmm. And you need to have that conversation so that this can get planned out. And if that man or that wife or that woman love you, believe me, they're going to be willing to work it out. They're going to be willing to change from what they're doing. They're not going to keep lying about it. They're going to be yes. willing to work with you. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, then you already know. Yeah. You know? And then a lot of people, you know, I hear people too talking about, I ain't marrying nobody, mm-hmm. but you're sleeping together. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want to be married. But, you know, but then you want the blessings. They want to pray and ask God to bless them and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. How you can ask God. This is the problem we have in, in, with a lot of so-called church folks. You know, you in a committed relationship, but y'all sleeping together. Now you want to pray about God blessing you when things are going wrong. How can you ask God to bless you when you're out of order? Mm-hmm. This is what we keep telling people. Mm-hmm. Church folks, we're the main ones. Yes. If anybody should love the Lord and want to do right and obey his commandments, man, you think we the ones want to get in order. Yes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. To be pleasing to him. Yes. You know what I'm saying? How can I be living with, with my wife? And, well, you know, before we was married, shacking and all this stuff, 10, 20 years and talking about God blessing yep. us. No. no. If you want the blessings of the Lord, you God is a God of decency and, and order. order. You know? I'm sorry. Yeah. But that's just how they go. Yeah. A husband and a wife has the right to God mm-hmm. and to the things of God, but not a boyfriend and a girlfriend. And you've been, a, you know, you got older elderly people too out there, boyfriend and girlfriend. Are mm-hmm. you kidding me? Are you kidding? No. You either going to be husband or wife to receive the blessings of God. Yes. But that boyfriend and girlfriend that's shacking, mm-hmm. no. That's not, that's that. Don't mm-hmm. be looking for God to bless that. I'm sorry. And I don't know who I'm talking to. I got this one here. God gave me. Stop getting in bed with anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because the person, like I said, look good. The person mm-hmm. look good and all this or got money and you jump in bed with them. Mm-hmm. I can you just give yourself up to anybody? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You're talking about 
spending the rest of your life with a person and all this. Yeah. You know, you hear women talking about, oh, it was just a one night stand and all that. Mm-hmm. But you don't know how many people this person has slept with. You, you don't know, you know what this person got, especially you know? nowadays. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And even the ones you're getting on. serious with, you but you need to take them down there and get a health checkup or something. You yes. know what I'm saying? You're talking mm-hmm. about getting in bed with somebody. You don't know what people have now. No, you don't. And I don't, I don't know who I'm talking to. I would tell my daughters, my son, all this. Just don't jump in bed with anybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? There's too much stuff going on nowadays. Yes. You know, you got to get to know a person and, and talk to them. And you just can't take a person for face value anymore. Yeah. Because then the truth come out, oh, he got babies out there or he been married before and all mm-hmm. this. You don't know who's lying to you. You don't. But you want to say, you know what? I trust him. I love him. You don't even know this person. Mm-hmm. What do you know about this person? Lord Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can tell you anything to get in your underwear. That's right. You know, get in between your legs. Yes, They'll Lord. tell you anything. They will. Say anything. Put on a good performance yes, for you. Smell will. good, look good. Yes. Take you out, wine you, and dine you. And then once they got you, I don't know how many people out there I'm talking to tonight that's been through there. Mm-hmm. You know what? You know, I thought this guy was so nice or she was so pretty and she's mm-hmm. so nice. And look, she done left me. Find mm-hmm. out she been using people. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to help somebody tonight because yes. I wouldn't want anybody to do that to my sons or my daughter. That's right. But you got you got people out there that's running around. They selfish. They only yes. care about themselves and what they can get. Yeah, they don't care about you. Yes, you know what I'm saying. We've been married 31 years and faithful, mm-hmm. committed to one another. Been yes. through some ups and downs, but yes. you know what? God helped us. Yes, He did. God helped us, yes. and, and we we hang on to our vows. You know, I was yes, like, we do. You know, I don't. You don't have to do all that stuff anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just because the person look good, I can look, keep pushing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Keep pushing. Because you know what? The grass is, yeah, it could look green on the other side, but you got to know what you got at home. Yes. You know, who's been there for you. Yes. When a woman been there or a man been there for you, come on. Mm-hmm. You can't be faithful. That's right. When I'm working, we we love the Lord yes. and things are going good for us. Mm-hmm. And you, you can't be faithful. You know, the enemy going to come try to tempt you. Mm-hmm. But you know what? When you a man of God, you'd be like, oh, I see you. That's Apostle right. Paul said it so good. I know the devices. We know the devices we of do. the enemy. Know the you know, he do. come to kill, steal, and destroy. When mm-hmm. you know the devices of the devil, you know. When yes. a woman coming in, shaking herself and asking this and all this around yeah. everybody. Mm-hmm. And, and that's when you get out the way. Yes. Sorry, girl. Yes. Not the one. Yes. And <laughs> Came don't, too far. And don't get me wrong. Sometimes when you are a believer, sometimes you can get weak to that. Yeah. Sometimes some men or some women, they get weak even though they are mm-hmm. believers. But what I'm saying is when you are a true believer yes. and a true trooper for God and you've yes. been through some things, mm-hmm. you don't want to get involved in stuff like that. You will know the devices of the enemy yeah. because God is going to let you see and know the devices mm-hmm. of the devil. And yes. like I said, God can restore a marriage when both are believers quicker. And that marriage can be even a stronger bond mm-hmm. after a after an affair, yes, you know, or whatever is going on in the marriage. And then as long as those people, two people want to love each other and they want to come back together with each other and they mm-hmm. want to ask God for forgiveness and they want to turn from their wicked ways. You've got to turn from your wicked ways. You cannot decide, you cannot say you want to come back to a marriage and then keep going out there doing wrong and yes. keep asking for, for mm-hmm. forgiveness. No. Mm-hmm. Then the person will have to turn from their wicked ways and then God can restore that marriage. That's yes. how God can restore a marriage. God is not restoring no any marriage out there that's just yes, out there. Yes, and like yes. I said, that person is an unbeliever. They don't want to believe. They don't want to be with you. Let it go. Let it go. Now, if God wants to restore it, he can if he wants to. But mm-hmm. like I said, that person's free will would have to be that they want to change and yes. they want to uh, turn their lives around mm-hmm. and seek God and they want their marriage back. Yes. And God will give you. God will give us the desires of our heart. Bottom line. You know, oh, so yeah. you desire if that unbeliever desire to be back together with that wife or husband and that husband or that wife want to be back together with that unbeliever. But that person becomes now a believer and wants to change and wants to come in and fix the marriage and God can fix that marriage. That's a marriage that is can be fixed. And that's a marriage that has been tested. And that's a marriage that can be trusted as time yes. go on. You know, because if your marriage ain't been through nothing, mm-hmm. you know, how can you be how can you be? Uh, uh, trusted if you've never been through nothing in your marriage. Yes. You know, nothing. You know, me and my we've been tested. Oh, we've been tested. We've been mm-hmm. tested, tested, believe me, yes. in the 31 years of marriage and 35 years together. We have been tested. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to tell you this. 
we have stood the test of time. Glory be yes. to God. And uh, that is yeah. having, that's because we put God first. We, uh, you know what I'm saying? We're not perfect, okay? Yes. By a long shot. And that's uh, how we're yeah. able to come to you to talk to you. Mm -hmm. We're not talking to you because we perfect and then we don't go through nothing and nothing has never happened in our marriage. Yes. No, we can talk uh, to you because yeah. we've been through some hell and we have come back from it. Mm -hmm. And God has restored us yes. and restored us to each other. You know what I'm saying? To the point that we're now, I feel like we're on a honeymoon in our marriage and a long yes. one, which yes. has been a blessing, mm -hmm. you know? So we're not coming to you, talking to you from, from stuff we've never been through. We're talking to you from some things we've been through. And in my yes. book, uh, A Cup of Daily Wisdom for Your Marriage, we've been through all of those things in that book, mm -hmm. all of those things. And that's why every day I can come to you and I can talk to you about it. Yes. You know, we can talk, we can sit here and talk to you and minister to you. We couldn't do this when we first got married. No. We couldn't minister to nobody. We was going mm -hmm. through some things. We was going yep. through some growing pain. We had to work through our situation. Mm -hmm. And but thank God, you know, that God was there for us to be able to do that. You know, yes. I'm just so grateful, uh, you know, that God we could that God was able to help us to do that. You know, God is amazing. He is amazing and how he can change you and how he can restore you and how he can fix your situation. I don't care what is going on. As long as you two want to be there together, God can, he can fix it. Yes. Right. God, you know, any situation, any challenge, God yes. is always there. For yeah. You, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? He'll mm -hmm. bring you through it. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll live in witness. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you okay? I would just, yeah, um, just, wanna, just checking wanna, some stuff. That's all. Yeah, we just want to thank everybody tonight. We pray that you got a um, that God just touch your heart tonight. Mm -hmm. This marriage is beautiful. Yes, it you is. You know, I want people to think you can be happy in your marriage in your relationship. Mm -hmm. Don't get us wrong. You can be happy in it, but you got to put work in it, and you can't be sleeping yes. on your relationship. Yes, you know, because the enemy. When you're going out, you got to say, tell that husband, "Hey, I love you, babe. You look nice today. There's nothing wrong with it." Yes. Tell your wife, you know, you're beautiful yes, to me. You know, right. people want to hear that. You're yes. in a relationship. Yes. You know, how can I help you, babe? Let's communicate. Let's Let's talk. You yeah. can't every come home every day and tell your wife, I don't want to talk about it. Right. Uh, or him, I don't want to talk about yes, it. Exactly. Or every day I had a bad day. Yes. And then you come to the door looking all crazy and everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Certain things you could do. You see the warning sign, you can do it. Yes. You know? Yes. And just hallelujah. Yes. So anyway, we just, just want to thank y'all so much for joining us in the cafe tonight. Yes. We're going to continue this on next Sunday. Continue the seven principles of marriage. That was like one big principle. And that was the vows <laughs> that we talked about. So we gave you some stuff in there and the covenant and about the vows. But we're going to put in the seven seven principles on next Sunday. So make sure yes. you join us. We're going to continue because we want you to know what God says about being married yes. and what it requires. So make sure you mm. meet us here in the cafe on time at six o'clock yes. on next Sunday. But anyway, also subscribe to us on YouTube, um, you know, at Marriage Cafe One. And then don't forget, we're on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So you can download our podcast and get those every week on your phone, or you can send them out to people that you might want to listen to us that might want to hear maybe a certain subject or something we talked about. Go ahead and share it. And then make sure you um, share this broadcast, especially if you're watching it from YouTube, because they can't really share it from the cafe, yes. but you can share it from YouTube and share it, share it and share it. But, um, definitely meet us here on next Sunday at this, at six o'clock. And we're going to finish up the catch seven on principles of marriage. marriage and then catch my husband on Thursday for his podcast. Go that's ahead and six. tell us about it. That's right. What is the name? Well, let's talk about it. Change. Let's the game, game podcast with Bishop Pittman. With Bishop Pittman. He'll be on, exactly. on, on six, at 6 o'clock yes. on Thursday. Thursday at 6 and you'll see o him on Facebook, okay? And, uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Anyway, God we thank y'all. Oh, let's pray out real fast. Yes. Go ahead. Dear Lord, dear Lord, we're so thankful, Lord. And, yes, uh, we are, Lord. Just Thank praying you. tonight, Father, that we're just pleasing in your sight, Lord. Yes. Touch each and every relationship, every marriage out it's there that Lord. represented tonight. Yes. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises. Thank we you, thank Lord. you for all your many blessings. Let us all have a blessed, awesome week. Yes. Cover us by your blood. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We Amen. love y'all. We Amen. love y'all. Love y'all. And we'll definitely see y'all on next Sunday. Okay. Yes. All right. God bless. God bless. Bye-bye.